Hello everybody, I'm Patrick Chanazon from Google. Uh, we're here today at Google for a tech talk uh, by IBM Research Labs uh, about a new approach to uh, privacy in social networks. Uh, so here's uh, Kun Liu from IBM who's going to uh, explain the uh, a very innovative approach to dealing with privacy in social networks that the IBM team has built. Thanks. Okay, good afternoon, folks, and uh, my name is Kun Liu. I'm uh, from IBM Amazon Research Center. Uh, it's uh, my great pleasure to come here, visit Google today with my colleagues, and to introduce our work on privacy and risk management on social networks. Okay, so uh, uh, before I start, I'd like to ask you some uh, questions. So how many of you are Facebook users and the MySpace users or LinkedIn users? Please raise your hand. Okay, great, Go, everyone. Oh, maybe you are all like, okay, okay. So uh, another question, second question is, how exactly you know how much information about you is being shared on these networks and who can view that information? Do you have any idea? Okay, now, third question, how much information about you is being shared on these networks compared with other people, such as a private experts like me? Any idea? Okay, never mind. I don't know either. Okay, so, but today I'm gonna give you some solutions that have helped you answer these questions. Okay, so now let's start. So, here, because this is a teamwork, I like to first introduce some of my team members. These are great people I've been working with during the past years. And uh, Tyron Gwenson is not here today, but he's a manager and he oversees this project. And Quinn, uh, this is me. And Max. Matthew Millen, and he's, he's here, and he's expert of web applications, and he actually he leads the architecture and, uh, and system part of this project. And uh, Arjit is a web expert of web application, helped us de de deploy some application on the cloud platform. And Emma Maria to Z, she's also here, he's an uh, expert of machine learning and data mining. And we also have three engineers from uh, IBM Silicon Valley Lab, who help us convert some of the ideas from uh, concept to, to reality. Okay. So, uh, so now let's start begin with a, a video. Pleasant suburb, we're living in the basement at her mom and dad. So we can't get a loan for a respectable home. Just because my girl defaulted on some old credit card. If we'd gone to freecreditreport.com, I'd be a happy bachelor with a dog and a yard. Okay, okay, so I'm not trying to do advertisement for freecreditreport.com. But how come this credit score is related to today's talk? Okay. So as many of you may know that the credit score was invented in the 1950s by a company called Fairy Stack. Okay, at that time, nobody knew how important this credit score would be in 50 years. But today, this credit score is everywhere. It determines everything from the interest rates we pay on our credit, credit card and how attractive we are as a job candidates. Okay, so how about something like a privacy score? It tells you what's the potential privacy risks of you on social networks. And it tells you how much information about you is being shared on social networks. Who can view that information? It can automatically guide you towards a better privacy protection or configuration that makes you feel safer and comfortable about your online life. Okay, so this is my question. So as I, I'm giving this talk, I'd like to ask you to uh, think about this question. Whether you want to design something like a privacy score in your open social and some other social applications, such that this privacy score will have the same impact as credit score in 50 years, or much, 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 much less than that. Okay? So this is my question. Please think about that. And next, I'm going to tell you and discuss why this is important and how to do this if you really want to do this. Okay? So I'm going to first. Uh, uh, elaborate the motivation ago again. And then I'm going to describe some uh, serious mathematic models behind this, uh, this private score computation and uh, some of its applications. Then I'm going to discuss how this thing and its application can be incorporated with open social and other social applications. And finally, as a proof of concept, Max and uh, my colleague will demonstrate the 
a prototype we have developed on Facebook. It's called the Privacy Aware Marketplace. And this prototype has adopted many of the privacy models and concepts that I will be covering today. Okay, so this is a, a roadmap. So the motivation. As well, we know that uh, millions of users are sharing their personal information online, okay? And uh, we have friends, we also have many, many different strangers who can view our information. So inevitably, the disclosure of sharing of information had some implication on our privacy. Digital stalking and identity theft are some of, of the most common threats, okay? And we all know that. But unfortunately, unfortunately, even very sophisticated users like me who value their privacy often compromise it because I really want to improve my digital presence online to become popular or cool or something like that. So I share a lot of information. And also because my friends have shared lots of information online, okay? So, so the problem is that I cannot estimate the long-term risk compared to the short-term gain. This is one problem. And another problem is, uh, okay, it's very difficult and complicated for me to configure the privacy setting on social network. It's, it's often a time-consuming, overwhelming task, and many users will skip. So I'd like, like to ask you, like, how often are you going to revisit your privacy setting on Facebook in the last three months? Have you ever revisited your privacy setting on Facebook? No? Okay. So because it's complicated and it's overwhelming. So eventually, as the time goes by, we share more and more and more and more information online. It becomes that we lose control of our information. We don't know what information we have shared and who can see that information. Okay? So the goal of our work is to develop a model, a platform, and mechanism that can help users to monitor and measure their information and privacy risk online. So the, the goal is to boost public awareness of privacy, of course, but also, most importantly, it wants to help users to manage their information sharing online easily. And, uh, and now you can see, okay, now we're talking about privacy, we're, we're talking about identity theft and risk. So it's very important to know that our goal is not trying to prevent people from sharing information, okay? Instead, we believe that simple and effective privacy and risk management techniques can create a safer and more comfortable online environment that will eventually facilitate information sharing and integration. It's just like if I know all the search hazards, then I will feel comfortable about using some services. But if there are some hidden fees I don't know, then when it comes up, I feel very frustrated and upset, okay? So how can we achieve this goal? So uh, we developed the notion of privacy score. And uh, this score indicates the potential privacy risks of users on, on, in social, uh, social networks. And uh, with this score, there could be many applications. Like, for example, similar to our credit report, we can provide user uh, information sharing report that tells user, OK, what information I have shared and uh, who can view that information. It helps me to track all my information online, OK? And uh, also the user can monitor his privacy risks and compare that with other people in the, in the world, just like we can compare our credit score with other people's credit score. Okay, so when the overall privacy risk on the social network is lower than the risk of this user, the system might recommend this user a better, a stronger privacy setting for this user automatically. So the user just say like, oh, I want to choose this privacy setting to increase my, my privacy protection, then everything is done. Okay, so I'm pretty sure you may come up with some other applications like just as in the case we do for a credit score, right? In the real world, we have many different applications and the revenues are generated from these applications for, for credit score. So, uh, so next, uh, I'm uh, going to describe uh, the theory behind the credit score, uh, the private score computation and some of the applications because we're talking about private score. So how can we compute that one? Okay. So uh, this is a very high level, level life cycle of privacy score. So it takes the social network as input, and the system extracts the privacy settings of all users and all the profiles about different users, and calculates the score. And this score is then delivered or visualized as a something like speed or meter thing to the user. So user has the score and know how it looks like. 
And then this score is delivered to the user. The user can monitor his privacy risk score and take a more active role in safeguarding his information. Okay, and also information sharing reports and other privacy setting recommendation applications can be developed based on this score. And then this score, the user may take some actions to protect this information or do some other privacy reconfiguration on the social network. And then it just keeps looping like this. So, so the, the privacy settings here actually is nothing but this privacy control, like uh, what information about me can be accessible by whom. Like my birthday can only be viewed by my best friend, and my cell phone number is uh, only uh, viewable by my, my, my coworkers or, or friends or colleagues. But other information like my mother's maiden name should be kept uh, con uh, confidential. No one should be able to see that. So this is a privacy setting. Just like on Facebook, you have different visibility settings. Okay, so this is a very high level life cycle of this uh, privacy score computation. Okay, so now, how to compute that? So uh, from a very technical point of view, intuitively, not technical point of view, but intuitively, we require this privacy score to satisfy two properties. Okay, so the first one is sensitivity, which means the higher the sensitivity, the information you revealed on social network, then potentially the higher the risk a, 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 a social network user will be facing. For example, mother's maiden name is more sensitive than mobile phone number from many people's intuition, right? So if one guy only revealed his mother's maiden name, but another guy only revealed his mobile phone number, then the first guy is more easily to be a victim of identity theft, okay? So the second property is visibility. It means that, okay, the wider the information about you spread over the network, then the more likely you're being a victim of identity theft or some other evil thing. So for example, the home address, if it's only known by my uh, best friend, then it's probably much safer than it's known by everyone else in the world, okay? So this is a visibility and sensitivity. These are two properties that the privacy goal we think should satisfy. But how to combine these two parameters together to compute a score? It can be very simple, okay? So uh, this is the, the, the contribution of a single item in the overall privacy score of a user. So you can see that it's a product of the sensitivity of the information and the visibility of the information it gets. So here, we, when we talk about profile item, it means either your birthday or address, your phone number, your mother's maiden name, or even your sexual orientation. Okay, so you can see that a single item may contribute to the overall privacy risk by combining both sensitivity and visibility. So then the overall score of a user is nothing but a combination of the individual contribution from each profile items. So we can do that, just to do a simple summation over all the simple individual privacy score from each individual items. And this gives you the overall privacy score. Okay, so now the question again comes up. So how can you estimate the sensitivity and how can you compute the visibility? So we have two tasks to fulfill. So uh, for simplicity, let's just consider that we have a big table that can represent all the users and all the profile items, how they share the information, how the user share the information, how the item being shared in a big table. So each row represents a profile item, such as a birthday or mother's maiden name or cell phone number, okay? And each column represents a user. And uh, a cell located in the i's row and the j's column, if it's white, means the user j will share this information with the public. If it's gray, that means the user will not share. So we can see that this very simple case is binary case, either share or not share. But in practice, we have many different sophisticated cases, like I only share with my friend, with friend or friend, with friend or friend or friend, for simplicity, I'm only gonna talk about this binary case. But bear in mind that all the mathematic, math, mathematic models I'm gonna talk is going to be easily extended to this more sophisticated case, okay? Let, now let's just focus on this binary case. So sensitivity. So intuitively speaking, if an item like my cell phone number, if it's very sensitive, then not many people will share this information online. They will keep this confidential, right? So, so Based on this intuition, the simplest way is just to count the proportion of people that will not share this information. 
just look at the row in this big table and count how many people are not going to share this information and use this proportion as a sensitivity value. And you can see the higher the value, then the less people who will share this information. Okay? So this is sensitivity. So how about uh, visibility? This can also be very simple because we know the explicit privacy setting of the user on this item. So it can be either one or zero. So we can just use this one as our visibility. Share or not share, one or zero. Okay, but because we are data miners, we are machine learning people, so, and we are statisticians. So we know that what we have observed in the real world usually comes from uh, just a sample from some underlying probability distribution. Okay, so this big table is no exception either. So what we want to do is instead of know the explicit setting, we want to know what's the expected setting in this in this table. In that case, the visibility becomes a probability. It's just like what's the probability that this user J is gonna share this item I. Okay? So so now you can see the probability, then how to compute this probability. O again, there's a very, very simple way. If we assume the the, the item and the user are independent, there there's no interaction between them, then this bit probability can just can be computed as the probability of a one in this row and the probability of a one in this column. We multiply them together because we assume independent ident ID distribution of the data. So we can just do this multiplication. It simply means if the user has very high tendency to share many information, then this user is also likely to share item I. But and on, on the, in the same time, if the profile item I is very is not very sensitive, it's being shared by many other users, then it's also more likely to be shared by this user J. So just compute the row and the column and get the probability. This is a very, very simple case. Okay, so uh, any other approach that we can do that to make this better? Uh, so now, because this one, you, you, you know that this in independence assumption usually does not make much sense in reality. So we have to come up with a better better case. So so um, okay. So this is the Paris score used based on this sensitivity and visibility. So we have to come up with a better case. So so here we introduced a new model called item response theory model. We could use this model to compute the sensitivity and visibility. So what's what's this model? So this one was originally used for. Uh, oh, it's still currently being used for, for uh, for analyzing data from questionnaires and tests. It actually is the foundation of today's most popular um, <coughs> computer adapt uh, uh, computerized adaptive testing like GRE or GMAT. So basically, the model is the ability of the students and, uh, and the difficulty of the questions students answering. And uh, it models that the probability that a student is able to correctly answer a question is based on some uh, logistic model. And the model, the, the curve, the trend is like this, for example, if the student's ability is high, which means the student's very knowledgeable or something, then it's more likely that the student's able to answer the question correctly. Okay, so this is a this is a very high level idea about item response theory. But in a privacy case, the student's ability actually corresponds to his kind of inherent attitude. Okay, now here comes something different. Attitude, like whether I'm very conservative or very control uh, extrovert or whether I'm very careless or I'm very open, something like that. So if, m if I'm very open or very careless, I probably want to sh share much, much more information than a conservative people, right, or introvert people. So, so now that's why we come up with a new model called IRT model. So you can see now in this case, the probability that a user J will share some item I is modeled by this uh, logistic function. Okay, and in this function, the parameter beta models the sensitivity of this information. It's analogous to the difficulty of a question in the, when you take an exam. And the, the higher the sensitivity, the, the lower the probability, which means if this problem is very, the item is very sensitive, then many people will not share this information. And the, the parameter theta here models the user's attitude, whether he's very conservative or extrovert or very liberal or relaxed. Okay, so you can see if this attitude is very high, then this probability is gonna be high, which means if the user is very 
extra world, they're open, then these people is more likely to share the information. So the probability that is equal to one will be very high. The, and the nice thing here is that you can see that we place the attitude about the user and here in the attitude and the sensitivity about the item on the same scale. So they can compare with each other. So if the user is very open and uh, its value is higher than sensitivity, which means I don't care about this, this information, I don't care my master made a name, then the probability is gonna be very high that this user will be sharing this information. But if this value attitude is less than the sensitivity of the information that, okay, I can't tolerate with the disclosure of my cell phone number, then the probability is low that this user will not likely to share this information. So this is a very a basic idea about how these things are going on, okay? And, uh, and this is another auxiliary parameter that just to tell us some, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some property about the, 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 the profile items such as the cell phone number or birthday, and I'm not gonna uh, discuss this parameter in, in this case. Fifty-fifty equal yeah fifty-fifty. That's the uh, that's the uh, very important. Yeah, that's a definite. Yeah, that's a definite. Yeah. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. So okay. Now let's come back to the original overall privacy score computation. It's simply a combination of the uh, sensitivity of the information and the visibility. It can be either explicit setting like one or zero, or in the probabilistic case, it's probability. And uh, we know that sensitivity can be estimate can be. Uh, obtained from this model in here, and the visibility is from this model directly. Okay, and also we know that we have some byproducts like uh, the discrimination of the, uh, the, 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 the profile and the user's attitude. Okay, I'm gonna tell you that how we're gonna use this information because this information is also very interesting. So, uh, so now the question is, okay, if we know all these parameters, we can compute the privacy score for the user easily, but the question is, we don't have it. Okay, we have to estimate that. But how can we estimate this information? Maximum, maximum likelihood estimation, or EM algorithm. Because, because you can see this is the probability, so it models for that for each user and for each item, how likely the user is going to share this item. Okay, so that means this is a generative model. So then we can just compute the likelihood ratio, likely, uh, maximum likelihood of the data based on this model, and you use the EM algorithm or some other algorithm to compute the, the parameters, and then we use these parameters to, to calculate the score, final score of each user. Okay, and uh, okay, and now you you may ask questions. So why this model? Why not other other models? Maybe this model is too complicated or something like that. And uh, the advantage of this model is that as a generative model, we conduct some user study to get some survey from user, and we collect some real world data and we do experiments, and we found that this model fits the real-world data very well in terms of the chi-square goodness of fit, okay? And this is one advantage. The second one is like the quantities, the IRT model computes like the sensitivity, the attitude, the visibility, have very intuitive interpretations. For example, the attitude to measure whether this person is very controversial or open or careless or liberal, literal, can be used as a psychometric instrument by sociologists who can use this information to study people's online behaviors. Okay, the sensitivity gives you how sensitive some information is, so the user can monitor his privacy risk, and uh, if some information is being shared online, the sensitivity of this information is outside of the comfortable region, then the system might send an alert to this user, oh, the information you shared is too sensitive. It's just like, okay, this month I spent the hundreds of thousand dollars on my credit card, then the credit card company is gonna send me an alert, something like that, okay? And the, the third one is because although the maximum likely estimation, EM, is, sounds very complicated, but actually many of the computations can be parallelizable, which means you can do the computation probably on MapReduce and, and some other parallel computing platform. So, so this can scale very well for real social network even for millions and millions of users. Okay, so that's just practically efficient. Okay, so uh, we did some evaluation. Of course, we have to do some evaluation to, to, to test the theory and the model. So we, uh, we collect some data from 150 users over 49 profile items, some uh, such as the uh, name, gender, birthday, political views, 
and we ask them to specify their information sharing preference such that okay given a birthday how 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 are you willing to share this information you want to share with no one with only friends with friends of friends or with everyone something like that okay we get this information and these are some some uh, statistic from about this survey and we do this computation we estimate the sensitivity of the information and uh, in the upper right corner in this figure we visualize using a tag cloud the sensitivity of the information we studied so the larger font means higher sensitivity as you can see mother's maiden name has is the highest sensitive sensitive information okay but on the other hand you probably can't see this small dot and this is gender so it just located right above the letter h of mother is gender which means this information almost no people would care about this information they just disclose their gender information on social networks this is a very interesting finding okay and then we also compute the private score for each of these 153 users and we then group them according to some geographic location like uh, uh, north american eastern coast and north american west coast and this bar shows the average score per location and as you can see people from north america and europe have higher privacy score but people from asia and australia have relatively lower privacy score okay so you may find different reasons to explain this phenomena but uh, usually we know that people from asia are kind of conservative and don't want to share much information with other people but the social network inside in North America and Europe are more widespread, so people tend to share more information, or even under some social pressure to share more information to become popular and cool. Okay, so that's probably the reason why they have high privacy risk scores. Okay, so uh, so again, coming back to the application, given this social uh, the privacy score, what can we do about that? Privacy risk monitoring is probably one way, natural way. And privacy report, similar to our credit report, it tells you what information you have shared and who can view that information. It helps to track all the information flow about your own social network. And uh, privacy setting recommendation. For example, I want to lower my privacy score or risk to a uh, range from a, to a range of 100 to 150. Then the system can just analyze the population and find all the people whose score are between this this range and use the most of for example, common setting or average setting about these people as a recommendation to these people. So that will give you automatically a rec recommendation, just like some collaborative filtering systems. Okay, so uh, okay, so that's pretty much about the theory and uh, models about private score. So now I'm going to talk about okay, given this thing, how can we integrate with open social? How can we work, work together to create a, a more privacy aware open social environment okay so as a first step probably this is the easiest way to do the integration so the open social might provide some native implementations of privacy score calculations to the uh, uh, de uh, developers and also the open social may provide some APIs to enable application developers to implement their own privacy score calculation because there could be many different models they can calculate this privacy score just like uh, the, uh, the FICO score and set different uh, credit agencies they can calculate their own scores and uh, based on this the, the, the open social might provide some APIs to enable application developers to build some uh, information sharing report modules or privacy setting recommendation modules so these are very uh, simple approach we can get started but in order to do this this is some uh, some API we recommend for example one API the open social might provide is get private score for a user and uh, the the key here actually indicates what mathematic models the uh, the, the function is going to call either IRT model or naive model and this is for a native implementation and the second one is is more like a generic call it's uh, the developer can implement their own primary score calculation based on their own models and because we know that in order to calculate privacy score, we need to know the uh, the privacy settings of the users, who can see what information, what's the privacy control. And we also need the function like this, get privacy settings for a user regarding a profile item. So this profile, again, can be chosen from existing open social, like a, a person field, a address field, or email field, like person's name, address, telephone number, even gender, or something information like that. 
and also for the automatic recommendation, we should have something like set private settings for a user uh, based on the existing uh, recommended settings and uh, regarding some profile items. So these are for, for recommendation system. Okay, so this is pretty much like that. And uh, if you are very picky, you may you may ask question. Okay, my privacy settings themselves are private. Okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, how can you get my private settings to calculate my private score to indicate my potential private risk? This is like a chicken and egg problem. Okay. So again, so this one, in order to access this private setting, we have to use some other authentication protocols, like this, for example, meet this OAuth protocol. So it simply get authentication from the user. It ask user, do you want to share your private settings so that I can compute private score and other advanced privacy management application for you? If the user agrees, then the application will get the token from the social network and then do this calculation, okay? So this is the one way. So, but I know you're, you're open social guys, you're ap application engineer, so you probably can come up with some other ideas to, to handle this problem. But this is one possible solution. Okay, so, uh, so finally, as a proof of concept, we have uh, developed an application called Privacy Aware Marketplace on Facebook. So this application has adopted many of the, uh, the uh, privacy models, ideas we have, I have just mentioned. So, uh, so next, Max, and we'll, we'll demonstrate some of uh, this application to you too and also discuss some features about this application. Yeah, so okay. very quickly, uh, thank you, uh, Tony. Um, you can thank. So we, what we did is we, we, we went to go, to go after eBay. Uh, just kidding. Uh, we decided to implement a application on Facebook that would allow us to play around with some of those concepts. And uh, what we did was to build a marketplace and this is sort of uh, an example of sort of how you see it. Um, I'm refreshing the page because Ajit here uh, posted this Angel and Demon book. And you can see this, the, the price now is zero because uh, we were playing with it. But he actually blocked it. So if he goes ahead and changes it, um, you know, then we can see uh, you know, the price changing. So the point is that you can control pretty much everything. But the key, and very quickly, and this is the part of the demo, is that uh, you get a score, and I don't know if you guys, do you guys uh, recognize this little thing here? This is a google o meter uh, which we use your charts API to do this. Uh, so it tells us that your current privacy, uh, my current privacy since I'm logged in here, is 49, and the recommended one is 25. So all I have to do to change it is to just basically click here. Uh, I'll do that after, but I'll show you uh, the basic model uh, for those items, so we have item and profile because that's the application. And you can see you could also go just like you can do on Facebook and some other open social application, change those items, and then your score will change. Um, and you can also do the same for uh, the profile. So what I'll do instead is I'll just click on it, uh, the recommended. And what it does is calculates it. And since we don't have a lot of users on this application, which might change after this stock is posted, um, you know, it basically changes it. So if we go back to the score, you'll see everything change. So this is one way of implementing it. It's a basic application on Facebook. Uh, certainly uh, for open social, uh, you know, adding it as part of the platform would mean that every application could actually use something like this, would implement it, and, and so on and so forth. So that's uh, the basic demo. Let's finish up and let's take questions. So if you have okay. questions about this, we can go back. It's okay. So, uh, okay, so uh, conclusion. So, in this talk, we have uh, discussed the importance of uh, privacy score computation and its applications. And we also provide two ways to calculate this privacy score and uh, some potential applications. Okay, we also discussed how possible we can integrate with this thing to open social or other social applications. And uh, again, our goal is to develop a mechanism and platform that can help users monitor their privacy risks and help them keep track of the information, their information that being shared online and also to boost the public awareness of privacy. Okay, but again, we believe that this is not trying to prevent people from sharing information, okay? 
But in, on the other hand, by using this advanced privacy and risk management system, we can create a safer and more comfortable environment in online social networks so that people will be willing and feel safe to share the, their information. And eventually, this will facilitate information sharing flow and integration. So here comes back to my original question to you, whether you want to develop something like this, privacy score, advanced privacy management, on open social, or some other application, so that 50 years or much less than that, people will appreciate the of effort. OK, so if your answer is yes, let's collaborate on the roadmaps and talk about how we can do this in the next step. And uh, thank you very much.